Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Cohn, and I'm a practicing neurologist. I'm also trained in psychiatry, and my presentation for you today is about mild traumatic brain injury. I hope you enjoy the talk and learn something. What, what is a mild traumatic brain injury? What is a brain injury? Well, the facts that surround a brain injury and who gets a brain injury and who's at risk for brain injury, I have slides put together and I'm going to share with you information from one of my lectures to the Brain Injury Association of Illinois this past October. I hope you enjoy it. The topic today is on mild traumatic brain injury. I like the image of a lighthouse because, of course, going from light to darkness or darkness to lightness serves sort of as a metaphor to illuminate things that we can't quite see. Anyone that's gone through a transition from an injury to healing certainly can relate to that. What, what is a mild traumatic brain injury? Well, mild came about as the description based on the Glasgow Coma Scale. The Glasgow Coma Scale was a scale that was put together to evaluate risk factors for survival based out of Glasgow, Scotland and published in The Lancet. It does not refer to the devastation or the ongoing difficulties you might expect that occur after an injury, but it serves as a useful predictor of what uh, percentage of people will recover and, and what the spectrum of presenting signs might be. So I list on the slide that there's a duration of altered consciousness or lost consciousness or change in consciousness, but it shouldn't extend beyond 30 minutes. After an injury, there's a forgetful period. It shouldn't last more than 24 hours. The Glasgow Coma Scale, if you're not familiar, is based on three measures. Each measure has different stages within it to evaluate. Eye opening, response to verbal requests, and motor movements. If we think about a concussion as a subcategory as a mild brain injury, we can see that with a concussion, Altered consciousness, loss of balance, headaches, those are the spectrum of some of the symptoms that result from an external force that injures the skull, the neck, the back of the head, the scalp, directly or indirectly. It usually results either from a blast injury or a rapid change in acceleration and deceleration. There's an overlap with a concussion and symptoms that last beyond a concussion called a post-concussion syndrome. What actually happens inside the brain is thought to be different mechanically than what occurs with a more severe injury or a moderate injury. So what is a concussion? And is a concussion part of a brain injury? And what do we mean by a traumatic brain injury? Well, I'm going to share four cases, a football player, a healthy worker that had a motorcycle accident, a lady that fell, and another case that all involved traumatic brain injury. In the news recently with all of the concussions, this is a picture of Cutler going down earlier this month, and this player, Hillenmeyer, was taken off the football team because of his concussion and his stance on risk for dementia and significant cognitive changes. This came more recently in the Trib. This is a picture that shows uh, it, the, uh, the, the contact forces. The contact forces at football range between 20 and 50 G-forces. But football and boys certainly aren't the only sport. So you can see that the injury rate with girls playing soccer is higher than boys, higher in basketball. Those are some of the sports that are more at risk for a concussion. There will be concussions throughout Chicago tonight and tomorrow, primarily from football games. Most of them that are mild will resolve, a percentage won't. The leading signs or symptoms that present usually are, are headache or dizziness or some kind of confusion. Uh, there are scales 
to evaluate at the sideline symptoms, attention, balance. There is a little gap between what athletic trainers know, what coaches know, and what doctors think. The loss of consciousness is not a predictor in and of itself of complications from a concussion, and a person can have a concussion without loss of consciousness. It's difficult for a person that's had the injury to report whether they had a concussion, but a bystander might be able to say that the person was confused for several minutes or longer. So in looking over legal records of cases, quite commonly a person that's in a car accident is picked up several minutes or 10 minutes later by an ambulance taken to the hospital, and fairly commonly the notes in the emergency room will say, patient did not report loss of consciousness. And then going into a deposition, what comes up is from the cross-examination, well, if this patient didn't have loss of consciousness and they didn't have a concussion, then there was no brain injury. Isn't that right, doctor? And that's a mistaken, outdated concept. So headaches are fairly common. If at the time of the injury, uh, the athlete is, is not fully uh, able to get back in the game or there was a witnessed two to three minute loss of consciousness, that athlete has to be taken out of the game. We don't have laws in Illinois yet. There are laws in several states. I don't know if it's 13 based on the damage that happened to a, a, a teenager in, uh, in Washington state. There's a law named after him.